Welcome to our session on the digital workplace. This built on the success that Orange have had in delivering Teams as a collaboration tool. We delivered and have a great reputation for delivering their workspaces with direct routing, tenant management and video capabilities as well. The video that you see in the backdrop is work that we did with the National Health Service, where during the corona outbreak, we delivered virtual desktops to consultants and doctors who were in isolation so they could continue working. Actually, this experience made us to rethink how we deliver the workplace to our customers. And during this session, we want to introduce you to VMware, Microsoft and West Coast, who are the partners that helped us to form this new solution. Chris, so Orange is bringing a new solution to the market. Can you summarize what that model looks like for us? Yeah, well, the terms like modern workplace and a digital workplace have blurred lines and often uh, are used interchangeably. So in, in my view, the modern workplace is related to the environment that we provide to employees, like hybrid way of working, flexible work times and focusing on output. And the digital workspace is the name for all the facilities that we provide to employees to do their work, like the device of choice, accessing uh, their applications and data regardless of time and location. So from the video, we saw the impact that COVID is having on some uh, users. Um, but as a strategist, is designing around COVID the right place to start? Or should we start from somewhere else when we're designing our digital strategy? Yeah, good question, Bob. Um, COVID has definitely accelerated the innovation um, in the way employees consume their IT to be productive. But this journey was uh, started a few years before COVID started. Uh, the pandemic for, forced us all to work outside the office um, as we had no other choice. Uh, but remember, only those companies that are able to change will survive, not the biggest and not the strongest company. That's interesting. I'm going to bring in Pooja and Barnaby here from Microsoft. Pooja, Microsoft are very much setting the pace of the race for change around the digital workplace. How do you see the future of the workplace in the next two to three years? Thank you for the question, Bob. Yes, you are correct. The world has changed. And if you see today's digital workplace reflects modern work styles, talks about user preferences and maturing technologies. And with COVID-19, we've seen a large and lasting impact on workplace and workforce, right? That's because many of the changes in consumer and business behavior that we started during the pandemic is going to persist. Things like hybrid work, the shift to e-commerce and digital channels, trends like exhilaration and adoption of AI and automation are going to be the key. And I'm sure when we get to the other side of the crisis, we'll see that many companies adopt to the hybrid work culture, which is not purely going to be remote, but it's going to be a combination of in-person and remote. So remote work is here to stay. And, you know, we need enterprise leaders, strategic partners. And the trend we've seen with large enterprises, they've started doubling down on their digital journey. They've started doubling down on their digital investments, which is not just investing in the consumer value chain. They've now started applying digital technologies to workplaces. And if you see, this is a big shift because, and that's where we have hyperscalers like Microsoft who have services like Azure Virtual Desktop, which is there to support digital workplaces. Like you might have heard about AVD. It's a Microsoft Azure based system for virtualizing its Windows operating systems, providing virtualized desktops and application environment in the cloud. And like just Chris mentioned, we have large global SIs like Orange who are here to help prepare the enterprises for any eventuality and help adopt the future workplace. Well, it sounds very exciting. Um, for a worker that's working in these environments, what does this new reality look like for them? Very interesting. You know, I'll just go ahead and summarize this for you because I can go on and on on this topic, right? But like I said earlier, Bob, future of work is going to be hybrid, right? And that's real. We'll be embracing a hybrid workplace. With that said, I'll categorize this into three broad trends for future. 
first very important the enterprises are putting employee experience first that's priority second we're focusing on how we can have delivery of apps anytime anywhere and finally the most important one is how we are going to be ready to automate at scale because and this can be done with the help of machines because with the advent of machines going forward you'll be seeing humans plus machines coming together in workplaces which should only amplify the human potential we'll need much diverse cognitive skills in the workplaces and that's finally going to result in frictionless it services which we are all aiming for but one very important thing for us is to keep security and resiliency by design we cannot afford to have security or uh, resiliency as an afterthought right so it has to be a part of our design thank you with this i'll hand it over to barnaby all yours barnaby thanks so much pooja you know one of the things that i see as i talk to customers and partners is this rush towards digital transformation and i think chris touched on it it's not necessarily the biggest it's really those customers that have been able to effectively adapt and change but in doing so i often see customers that perhaps took some shortcuts so one of the biggest things that i encourage everyone to do is go back and especially now as we start to think about a return to office go back and review some of the decisions that were made previously let's make sure that there isn't a lot of accrued technical debt from some of those early decisions you've got a great opportunity now to review that and working with a partner like orange to start to look at some of those um decisions and to ensure that as you move back into a hybrid world you've got the right infrastructures in place and one of the things that I'd love to talk about if we have time bob is microsoft's approach around zero trust well i think that's a great topic to go on to what do you mean by zero trust so you know it's a fascinating topic and i i would love to spend a lot of time here i know we don't have the time Um, but as we think about zero trust one of the things that sort of happened implicitly as people moved out of the workspace and started to work from home is companies had to think about how they authenticated and provided services to the user so if you think about traditional IT it was very much behind the firewall i'm going to assume that user is a trusted user now as i move someone to a home office or a remote location that isn't on the corporate network Now I make a different set of decisions to determine what is available to that user, how do I authenticate the user, the device, and even the location to determine if that is in fact a valid user and we've certainly seen it as people move and work from different locations. As we think about zero trust, one of the things that you can now think about is how do you continue that model as you come back into the office? So don't fall into the trap of just reverting back to a model that says, well, I'm back in the office, I plug a device in and I'm on a secured network. But as Chris mentioned, you know, device of choice, perhaps you've got users bringing their own devices in. If you extend that zero trust approach and validate every user, every device on every interaction, now I can move into a model that says it doesn't matter whether I'm in the office or I'm working remote. I'm applying the same level of vigilance across all of those accesses well thank you by the people it certainly sounds very exciting and the opportunity to design as pooja was saying the workplace of the future uh, sounds very very exciting um chris we're moving towards more of a customer centric type approach what is meant by that yeah bob it's even it's even stronger it's all about employee experience and the employees are the customers of our customers so putting the employee first mean that it is facilitating users in a way uh, we also see when delivering service to consumers uh, self servers instant support um, on non office locations or um, outside office hours so it implies that we move away from service level agreements and uh, more towards experience level agreements So this is a big change isn't it really I remember when I joined everybody received the same device and, and got on with their job but what you seem to be saying is that we should be more careful and more considerate about what devices we give to people but also to consider their work life balance and also these new generations that are entering the marketplace Oh uh, yes well definitely and it's funny that you mentioned the the balance between work and life um, assuming that work is no life but anyway uh but the tasks that we are looking at are focusing on the input and it only works if you have the visibility on your people so this was challenged uh, during covid when we were forced to work from home 
but when you focus on the output of your employees, you also um, um, you would also change your focus towards the facilities that you provide that contribute to the output. Uh, the generations um, um, that are now entering uh, the enterprise are, are used to deliver um, outputs with their tools of choice in Stenon, instead of spending eight hours a day at the expense of our employer fulfilling their tasks. Thank you. And Josh, I know that from VMware, you've been advocating this customer-centric approach. What are the lessons that you've learned from this? Yeah, we've been in it for a number of years, Bob. And the number one thing that I think is uh, important here is you have to put the human in the center. You have to do human-centered design with design thinking and end up having cross-functional teams that understand the technology, the HR side of things, the, the cybersecurity side of things, the physical environment type of things. All of that comes together to make what your experience is as an employee. And so when you do that, you can actually understand that and develop what's called an employee experience score, as well as security score. And that's super important to hit the uh, uh, XLAs that Chris was talking about earlier. So our, it, what we believe is you have to have a dashboard that you can actually provide back, like what Orangewood, to your clients, your customers, to show in real time, this is how what we're doing for you, and this is the type of experiences that your employees can achieve. So it really underlines this move away from SLAs towards uh, end user experience uh, agreements. So Most definitely. Yeah. You can't improve what you haven't measured. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for that, Josh. Chris, I'm excited by the approach that Orange is taking towards this, but I know that we've got a step beyond that as well and bundled this whole solution to align with a consumption-based model as well. Can you describe a little bit of that, please? Yeah, um, I already mentioned that there are three main components in the um, in the digital workspace, uh, and and the uh, and those are the endpoints such as the laptops and the, the tablets that we're using, uh, the portals to access information, applications and data, and also our hack um, our legacy applications that we hide in the cloud using AVD or other virtual desktop solutions. And cloud services and portal services are already charged on a consumption basis. But yeah, with the new approach, Orange is now also taking this towards the endpoints as well. Well, none of that would be possible if it wasn't for the partnership that we built with West Coast. And it's great to have uh, Alex here with us. Alex, can you just describe the capabilities that West Coast bring to this solution, please? Great, Bob. Thank you. Well, just an exciting time as work, as we've all heard, it is no longer a place you go. It's something that you do. And therefore, the device that you do it on is becoming increasingly important. And therefore, what West Coast has been able to achieve alongside Orange is to be able to create a device as a service model that allows individuals to be able to not only upgrade their devices, but also as businesses change and move their workforces, we can also make sure that we trade down the number of devices. And that's largely because West Coast are putting these devices onto their balance sheet uh, and being able to transmit those through Orange and their partners. Uh, and it's a very wide range of devices and brands and also specifications uh, that we have on offer. We are the biggest uh, device uh, distributor uh, here in the UK and a whole of EMEA uh, and uh, really one of Microsoft's critical partners uh, in Europe. So uh, our ability to be able to deliver a fantastic product to many, many different places internationally is unparalleled. Yeah, in fact, Microsoft said that when we're working with you, this is a real game changer uh, for the market as well. And we're not just talking about uh, laptops now. We're talking about desktops, workstations. And I heard Microsoft earlier talking about some of the power that you need now uh, on your uh, work device. But also this goes all the way up to uh, HP Enterprise servers as well. Uh, as we uh, transmit a, a product called GreenLake that allows you to trade up uh, in servers as well. So a really exciting range of devices and service portfolio that we can transmit all the way across the Orange's network worldwide. Thank you, Alex. So that's actually a very good summary of the solution that we're bringing to the market in the digital workplace. It's got three parts. So it's the hosted cloud solution, it's the workplace portal, and it's the device of choice as well. And all of that's underpinned by a consumption model where you can vary the number of users on a 30-day notice. 
None of this would be possible without the partners that we're working with. So I'd really like to thank Microsoft, VMware, and West Coast for contributing to this session. Thank you very much.